UAP or airborne objects that when encountered cannot be immediately identified. With regard to the importance of transparency, the department is fully committed to the principle of openness and accountability to the American people. No, we're going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots in the west. Oh my gosh, dude. U.S. Navy personnel recorded what appears to be triangles, some flashing. The video was taken through night vision goggles with a single lens reflex camera. Well, I, was, I mean, it's a pretty high-profile incident. Uh, I, I don't claim to be an expert. You're, you're the guys investigating it. I mean, who else is doing it? There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Before I begin the show, as I always do, this is dedicated to those who have been ridiculed, made fun of, and dragged through the media for the last past 75 years. I just got back from Costa Rica in a nine-day trip, and uh, I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the UFOs are still there, as they were last year. Uh, I caught many, many uh, videos and photos of things that scientists say cannot be, and yet I caught them. So with that, I'd like to begin with the first video. Now, we have a red arrow down there, so you can follow it. And look at this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this object is traveling very, very fast, and it's leaving a little bit of entrails. I don't call them chemtrails, I call them entrails. And if you look at them, um, it's like it's, they're going so fast in their frames that they can't keep up. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is in super slow motion. Let me say that again for the scientists out there. This is taken in super slow motion. This, is, this craft has to be going in, in, a, in, the, in the Mach area, at least a Mach 5 to Mach maybe 7, um, for me to catch in slow motion. The average jetliner, when it's landing at an airport, it's going between 130, 150 miles an hour while landing. I've caught jetliners literally just standing still in the, in the video, and you can see the UFOs traveling just like this one is. This would be the last loop here, but the red arrow again gives you an idea where it's going to come out, and you can follow it yourself. I would like to hear from uh, NASA or other scientists and tell me if there's no signs of UFOs on this planet, then what am I capturing? Are they supersonic bugs? Um, do we have dragonflies that can, that can do this? I doubt it. So they have to start treating this very seriously because uh, I've, got, I've got many, many more that I'm going to be showing you in the next few weeks. Now, ladies and gentlemen, everybody knows this photo. This is, the, of course, the famous gimbal. And um, I want to show you the next picture from here. This is the one that I took at Lake Tahoe. And uh, it resembles the gimbal in every way. Uh, this was taken in 2022. Next photo. Ladies and gentlemen, this was taken in Costa Rica, October 13th, at around 9.53 in the morning. Now, we're going to, next picture, we're going to show this thing a little closer up. This is the same shape as a gimbal. Next photo. What I used here was my software to be able to uh, get a more dynamic look of the core. Now, it's still, if you look around it, it has the shape of the gimbal, but it's got a central core. Now, scientists say, and I made errors in my last videos, but scientists say the center, the dark, is mass, and then the light is cold air, and they don't understand that physics. Of course, it's human physics, not terrestrial uh, extraterrestrial physics. They have to get that through their mind. Next photo.
This is as large as I could get it. But again, you can see the central core, which is density, okay? Density, not heat, density. And then the lighter area is cold. Now, there are different colors in there because uh, evidently this, because you're using my software, I may have gone through the light spectrum here. And it, it's showing uh, if, if they're using some kind of electromagnetic uh, field, if they're using uh, some kind of anti-gravity uh, propulsion system, uh, that it could affect what I am actually taking a picture of using my software. I'm not really sure because I'm not a uh, professional photographer. Next photo. We're going to look at a second gimbal. And this was taken real far away. We're going to show you the next one. It was in the air, and we enlarged it here. But take a look at the center again. You've got the density, and then look around it. You've got cold air. Now, that's according to our scientists, that we have cold air around it. I'm not saying that. The scientists are saying that, and yet they say there's no proof. On this one here, I used the software again. You can see that it's got density, and we got a little coloration in, on the outside of the density. But look at you still have the cold air, according to our scientists, around the craft. Next shot is the closest I've taken of it, and um, it's as large as I got it. And this gives you a better idea. Now, there's uh, around it, there's light because uh, the, the, the sky was gray. Now, I want you to see something very interesting. Look at the center of this. Uh, it looks like a rectangle. Why is the center of it blacked out versus all around it? Is it the software? Is it the, uh, uh, the dynamics of the propulsion system they're using? Uh, I'm sure we have no idea um, how their propulsion system works. I'm sure that whatever is making this look like this, it could be the software, but it may be something else uh, external and, and, and actually internal or both. So we have to look at it with an open mind because if you don't look at it with open mind, ladies and gentlemen, all you're going to be doing is guessing. Going on to the next. This was really interesting here, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, uh, I kind of like the, the movies that show these elongated craft uh, that are uh, in our atmosphere, and they look like they're just sitting there, uh, not moving. Uh, this particular one here was a, is a photo, and we're going to blow this up, and there it is again. You've got, you've got density, and then you've got light, a lot of light. Now, that's interesting because... Uh, as we go to the next photo, this is what we had. Now, I ask you, is this a mothership? Because the very first picture I took of it, it was just a little line in the air, a very small line. And yet, look at this. This is clearly a large ship because it has different proportions to it. Uh, and you got to stop thinking in human thinking, human terminology. Uh, human beliefs about things that fly. Um, there's no rod uh, rudders. There's no wings. There's uh, nothing there to to make to to give you an indication of where this thing is going, uh, re left, right, up, or down. There's no indication. Uh, for all we know, this could be spinning in the air because, after all, these were photos. These were not videos. And if you look at it, you see density in it, and then you see lighter areas. So does that mean that maybe uh, this craft uh, had density in some areas and then they had compartments in others? Or is it just my software? Again, I am not a professional photographer, and I can only assume what I am saying to you. But i like to, for you to make up your own mind on what you think this is. Next photo. Now, this one here was really far up there, and I want you to take a look at it uh, on the next photo. I'm just showing you in the area here where it sat, and this is what it was that was up there. We're going we're gonna to come in, and we're going to show you a little bit more. This is what was up there. And the reason why I do step-by-step step 
is because I want to give you, the audience, an understanding of how far up these, uh, these uh, incredible craft are and how uh, using my cell phone, not any expensive uh, photography equipment, my cell phone, I can get these, these craft by a cell phone. And I, when I search for, the, for items or anomalies in my pictures, I'm very meticulous of how I do it. And that's how I found this one. Next photo. Ladies and gentlemen, another mothership. Because that, ladies and gentlemen, when I first took it, was just a tiny speck. But it was extremely high up in the air. I was at a 90 degree angle when I took this. This was also taken on the 13th of October. And it was taken in the morning, about 9.55. So if you look at this, this looks like a ship. And I don't want you to go back to Battlestar Galactica and all that, but doesn't this resemble the kind of ships you see them on television when they're going in outer space? They resemble uh, this outline here. It seems to be, it seems to have uh, uh, compartments in it. And like any, anything that's uh, flying in the air, uh, if, it, if it looks like it has compartments, then it has some kind of mechanism to make it move right, left, up, or down. This, ladies and gentlemen, was in the air. It is not a speck on the screen. It's obviously a possible mothership. Again, I'm taking it with a 23 Ultra. Remember that, a 23 Ultra. For, so for those who say, well, you can't get that kind of quality, here's the quality. Next photo. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna be talking for the, about this for a few minutes. And the reason why it's so important uh, for me to talk about this is because I have taken a lot of time um, getting information on the Veda texts. And um, this is uh, actually through the Hindu texts, but we're gonna be talking about the Veda. And uh, it's interesting, and the reason why I'm showing these critters up here, or creatures, um, is because uh, back um, two, three thousand years ago, uh, they were talking about these creatures in our atmosphere. And these creatures would bring chaos and disease to humans. Now, this is on the Veda text, in which it goes back 3,500 years ago. So the question to you after the break, and we're going to go over this, is why... 3,000 years ago, why were they talking about aliens? And if you don't believe me, look at the Veda text. We'll be back after this message. We're back after the break, and uh, I want to thank you for standing by. Uh, now, you may be curious, why am I talking about um, things that happened 3,500 years ago? Okay? I, want to, uh, I want to gradually come up to a point. And the point of this is, that we have a video to show you, but right now, I want to go back to the picture before the break, and we're going to be bouncing back to these two images that were taken in the Veda text. So we can go to those, and while we're doing that, I'm going to be explaining to you where, what I'm getting at. UFO incidences are, are also depicted, of course, as I just said, in thousand-year-old Hindu texts such as the Vedas and the Puranas. Not only that, ladies and gentlemen, they also described other planetary systems with intelligent life and their interactions with humans. For example, the Rig Veda and the uh, Akarvarya Veda talk about extraterrestrial creatures. Remember that word creatures because we're not talking about human beings or uh, bipedal, uh, which means two legs, two arms, um, who used to come down to earth and create disturbances and would spread diseases amongst humans. But some benevolent creatures also helped humans and save them from these bile attacks. 
Does that sound maybe a little interesting to you? These are the reasons people in India still call deities or gods for help in relieving certain diseases. Today, they still do that. What is, suppo- what is so surprising about the Vedas is that they say there are a total number of 400,000 intelligent humanoid species in the known universe. Ladies and gentlemen, that's an extremely important statement because um, this was written 3,500 years ago. 3,500 years ago. Now, what is my point here of talking about bugs, insects, creatures who came here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this could be uh, something that happened 3,500 years ago, 4,000 years ago. But these are texts. Where did they get that information? They don't have no TV. They didn't have no internet. Was it somebody's imagination? I don't know. And now to get into my point of showing you these, these insects and flying creatures, I want to show you a video. This is taken in Costa Rica. And we're going to show it to you a couple of times. I want you to look at the upper left, that dark area up there. <clears throat> you're going to see a circle come out. And you're going to see uh, what... Um, some people say, well, there could be a flying bug. Well, it was really far up there, so I highly doubt that. This was at the end of the 17-second super slow motion video. It just appeared at the last split second. Now, uh, we went back and frame to frame, and it only came out in two frames at 17 seconds. So had I been uh, videotaping a little bit longer, um, it would have probably reached all the way through the whole screen. But this is far up there. It's not something that's um, uh, a foot away from my lens. This was taken on October 9th at 9.09 a.m. in Costa Rica. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what you're seeing right here. Now, you remember I, I talked about bugs, okay? Um, uh, we were looking at this through a magnifier, and it kind of looked like it had a wing on it, except that wasn't a wing. What happened was um, this was emitting light. Again, density and then light. Density and then light. And then using the software again. Next photo. This is what was going through the atmosphere. Now, we can stay here for a second. I want, to, I want to talk about this. Look at the shape of the dark part, the leading edge. Look at the shape of that. It looks like it has three different cone-shaped arrowheads on it. But they kind of resemble, if you look at them separately, they look like the gimbal in three different sections. So is that the gimbal in the front? And that's the entrails because it was traveling so fast. And then at the end, uh, on the higher end of it, you can see it's lighter blue uh, entrail. Could that be a possibility? I think that's what this is. But whatever it is, next photo, uh, using the software to its maximum, uh, or at least the maximum that I wanted to take it to, uh, you can get an, a, an idea that the very end of it, and remember, this is going down. Uh, the very end was dissipating as you go through the software, but it still gave you those three uh, shapes that resemble the gimbal. And ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me just say this. The gimbal is live and well in uh, Costa Rica uh, because I got many shots of them. Um, I did over 3,000 photos and videos, and I'm going to be bringing you them um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm happy to say that uh, next, uh, next week's show is going to be uh, starting an hour-long show. So I don't have to push all of this in. I can give you at least a little bit more clarity as far as I'm concerned. Next photo. Uh, this right here is the uh, end of the uh, photo session, but it's the video. And what is so interesting about this is you actually have a flying saucer up there in the top. And on the bottom, you have two UFOs interacting. And at the end of the video, again, 17 seconds, which means it is a super slow video, they just 
maneuver uh, like they were um, going crazy. Uh, they were making right angle turns, left angle turns. They were going up, down, they were crisscrossing. But if you take a look at this, th this is incredible how fast they were moving. So we can repeat this over again. I'm, I'm, I'm asking my director to repeat it over because you have to take a look at what these craft are doing. Uh, zero your eyes in on the, on the bottom one there because it's so important for you to understand that these craft uh, are doing amazing maneuvers in the atmosphere. And at the very end of this video here, you can see them actually moving. Um, the, the technical director was helping me um, trying to slow it down. We slowed it down to, I believe, 25%. Um, that's pretty slow from going from super slow motion to that. Uh, it's almost a standstill, but yet they're still moving. And I've looked at many, many of these videos and... Uh, to, just to let you know that the entire time, the nine days that I was in Costa Rica, there was only two days that I've got sunshine, just like this. It was very hard because of the low cloud cover they have in Costa Rica. Uh, a lot of times you can hear uh, biplanes flying by. You can't see them because they're basically flying in the clouds. And it's to me, it's kind of scary because we're talking about biplanes. Uh, maybe these are drug interdiction planes wherever they may be. I know they have uh, forward infrared and um, uh, to see where they're going. But uh, personally, um, uh, it, it scares me to think how low this cloud cover was uh, because you can actually feel uh, the atmosphere around you. Even when you're standing in Costa Rica, uh, we're in the tropics and you're, what you're doing is you're, you're feeling the heat, the moisture. And when you go to bed at night, everything seems to be wet. It's a, uh, kind of uncomfortable from a person who lives in Pahrump, Nevada and uh, is used to the dry heat. Uh, it's so interesting. But, uh, you know, I, uh, we're going to play this. This is the last loop we're going to do here. But um, I want to make a point here about what we've talked about, the, the, the Hindu texts. Uh, I, I respect and believe in all religions and, and their beliefs. Uh, you have to respect that. It's so important uh, that people don't judge or... Uh, say, oh, well, they're, they're crazy, or uh, I don't believe them, and this and that. You know, um, they can feel the same way about us, or, or you, or, or, or your family. It, it's, it's something that human beings really need to understand, that we're all human beings. And regardless of what your religion is, regardless of what your beliefs are, whether it be religion or not, um, people... Our people and we have uh, to respect each other um, from from this point on I'd like to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world before I left um, we had a war in uh, in Eastern Europe as you all know and uh, just humans killing humans terrible 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 I don't know how else to say it I come back and um, we have a Middle East war Ladies and gentlemen, you have literally thousands and thousands of, of innocent people being slaughtered, killed uh, on, on both sides. I'm not going to take sides here because I don't, do, I don't believe in that. But here's what I do believe in. These are innocent people. They're innocent. They're not firing off anything to, towards another person. They're just trying to live their lives. And whether you believe that the war in Eastern Europe or the Middle East uh, has to happen because um, it's an embattlement that has happened for many, many years, why is it happening? You know, people have told me that they are afraid of these beings from other dimensions, other realms, uh, other solar systems. They're afraid of them because of what they might do to us. What are we doing to our own people? to an intelligent life out there who's watching us, and I believe that's what they're doing. They're watching us. They're analyzing us. I believe they're looking at us and saying, look, at, they're still barbaric. They're still acting like animals. They're going after each other. They're killing each other. This has to stop. 
we're not going to go forward. And our children, our grandchildren, their grandchildren, they're never going to see a light of day. It's not going to stop. I'm just one person, but I have a voice. And I choose to, to, to give my opinion, not on any one side, but I give my opinion that human beings should progress. We're not doing that. We're looking like a bunch of animals. And I'm sorry, but if these, these uh, intelligent beings out there, I would not blame them one bit if they just left our system, whether it be our Earth uh, atmosphere, our solar system, just let us kill each other. I would not blame them one bit because we haven't shown uh, any respect to each other. And for that matter, we haven't shown a lot of respect to those alien uh, beings that I'm talking about either. We've had a history of shooting them with lasers, shooting them with Gatling guns, missiles. We are a barbaric race, and uh, we have to change. And I'm sorry if I hurt people's feelings, but that's just my opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you. And next week, don't forget, we start an hour show. Goodbye.